Hey, Lori, yep, it's Friday, so we're in the kitchen with Chef Tom, the Irishman. What are we making today? Uh, we'll be making Santa Fe pork, uh, which we'll be featuring on our Restaurant Week menu uh, starting the 26th. So Restaurant Week pretty much runs next week? Yes. Okay, what are some of the ingredients folks are going to need if they want to make this? Well, this is a uh, pork tenderloin that we've cut up and we've kind of pounded down into medallions. Okay. We, we're going to uh, salt that, flour it, beer batter it, fry it off, and then finish it in the oven. And then once it comes out of the oven and once it's uh, close, we're going to top it with our Guinness barbecue sauce. Okay. A little bit of our homemade salsa. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to make a mozzarella cheese sauce to put over the top of it. That sounds and then, yummy. And then we serve it with rice pilaf and our rustic vegetable. Okay. And I think the ingredients, maybe we have the ingredients, we can throw them off. How long does this take to make and assemble from start to finish? Uh, not too bad. I would say for this one, maybe about 30 minutes probably in that neighborhood. I mean, you want to give the pork time to finish in the oven. But basically, I mean, aside from the beer battery, we're just going to heat up some oil. And finish it in the oven. And it's really not the rice itself. Maybe probably about 20 minutes on that. Okay. Um, and some other items you guys have on Restaurant Week. You have tilapia, right? Yes, pretzel and crusted tilapia. Okay. Meatloaf, Guinness stew, buffalo chicken pizza. So we're going to start putting all the stuff together. Yes, sounds good. In our next segment. And welcome back. Chef Tom is heading south in the kitchen this morning. Let's go to him and Amelia now. Hey guys. Hey, Laura. Okay, we're back here making our Santa Fe pork. This is going to be one of the featured items for Restaurant Week, right? Yes, one of the featured entrees uh, coming up starting the 26th for Restaurant Week of the Irishman. Okay, so either you can write down the ingredients or you can just head there and have Chef Tom do the work for you. Well, we, you know, if you want to come <laughs> in, we don't mind doing it for you. We encourage you to come in. So Irishman, always a great place to go. Okay, so what are we doing right now? Well, I'm starting my rice, rice peel off here. I've got uh, some onions, some celery, some carrots. I'm going to cook that off. Okay. And I have two cups of rice here. I'm going to add that now, and then basically the ratio for rice is always two to one stock, so I got four cups of stock to the two cups of rice. Okay. And basically we're going to bring that to a boil. Once that comes to a boil, uh, we're going to put a, a cover on top of it, turn mm -hmm. off the heat, and just kind of let the, uh, the rice absorb. How closely do you have to watch the rice? Do you have to stir it? Can you it's just not nearly it as boil? intensive. I think I believe I made risotto on here before, and a few times it's not nearly as uh, labor intensive okay. as that. Basically with this, once it comes to a boil and starts to absorb, you just want to cut the heat, put a cap on it, check it, keep stirring just, it, and okay. kind of just, you know, check, double check the consistency. You don't want to overcook it, you know, become, become kind of mushy and everything. Uh, yeah, I'm so. horrible at cooking rice. I just have a rice cooker, then, you know, well, it's, that it's makes, consistent. That makes it a little bit easier, yeah, right? Yeah, right? okay. So what are we doing right here, then? What are you going to be doing well, here? Uh, at, at the restaurant, we, you know, we would put this in, the, uh, in our fryer, but uh, okay. at home, I've heated up with some oil here. As you can see, it's just starting to come to a boil. Salting and peppering uh, the two pork fillet or pork tenderloin medallions that I have here. Okay. A little bit of flour and then go into our uh, Guinness beer batter that we use at the Irishman. Yummy. Because we use Guinness. You know, Guinness is involved in most dishes there. Irish, right? Yes. And then uh, once I beer batter this here, we're just going to drop it into the saute. And then once you get the beer batter to stick on there, you're basically just going to finish it in the oven. Okay. So, and you might want to use. You might use tongs at home. Yeah, I don't bring your fingers yeah, don't, off, don't. please. This is not proper technique here. It's just a <laughs> little bit easier for me. This is just for exclusive for winging at Buffalo style this <laughs> That's morning. Right. And then once I fry these off, I'm going to give them about 20 minutes in the oven, and then we will make our cream sauce and our salsa on top, and should be good And to that go. batter smells delicious. Well, it's got a little Guinness in there. It is delicious, so, you know. And that's something you can only get at the Irishman. If you're making this at home, what would be a good substitution? You can, uh, you can make or buy a pre-made beer batter mix and okay. then just add, add a little Guinness, add a little soda water to it, modify it yourself, and kind of make it a little more flavorful. Okay, that sounds good. Well, we'll be back in the kitchen in a little bit. But it's a fabulous day. One of the main reasons Chef Tom's here with Irishmen, always on Friday. So we have our pork cooking in the oven right now. Yep, I have a beer battered it and I'm now finishing the oven, 350 for probably about 20, 25 minutes. You can always cut into it and kind of check, make sure that it's, make sure it's cooked all the way through. Don't want uncur uncooked pork. No, I mean some people will order it that way, but you know we try to discourage that. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to start making our sauce, right? Yeah, our Santa Fe, the Santa Fe component, I guess. Well, I'm going to saute off my vegetables. I'm going to top the pork with uh, barbecue sauce and salsa, and then I'm going to make a little bit of a mozzarella cheese sauce to kind of top over the, to put Yummy. over the top of everything. Yep. Okay. So, uh, for the cheese sauce, I'm going to start off with a little garlic here. Okay. A little shallot. Let me turn this up. So that's like medium high heat. Yeah, medium high heat. And we're going to saute uh, that off first. Off, we're going to use heavy. Heavy cream today. Well, we always use the heavy cream. You know, you don't have to ask about it. You know, you could substitute milk if you wanted to. You know, a cheese, a cheese sauce will work with milk as well. But Can you do skim? Does that curdle or do you want to, is that okay? It's okay. I mean, depending on how you make the, you know, as long as you add the cheese properly, it should be okay here. So, okay. let's get a little bit of cream here once this sautés off. 
And then I'm going to saute up my vegetables here at the same time. Okay, so literally it. just like a splash of cream. Yep, I'm going to cook that off. In fact, I'm going to set that aside here until I finish the pork, and we'll use our main, main burner here. And okay. Then, as you can see, I fried off the pork here. This is going to be our vegetables. So you just had the pork in the batter long enough to get... Basically to get the coat on. It, it normally sticks a little bit better uh, with the actual deep fat fryer, but... Um, this I'm going to finish in the oven. Okay. A little, bar a little of our Guinness barbecue sauce we're going to put on top here. And then a little bit of salsa. Yummy. Give that a second. Yeah, the salsa we make in-house as well. So fire that in the oven and then basically finish cooking our vegetables and our cream sauce here. What kind of vegetables do we have in there? That's parsnips, rutabaga, carrots, uh, zucchini, squash, some onions, red pepper. It's our new vegetable that we've been using at the Irishman. We're getting very good feedback on it. So oh, oh the, this mixture? This mixture here is our rustic vegetable mix. Yeah, we've I been love using parsnips. That. If you're watching and you've never tried them, you should definitely try them. You can even make like mashed potatoes with a little bit of parsnips. Yeah, in we there. have made mashed potatoes like that. We, we did some parsnip chips the other day. And uh, yeah, we try to try to change things up, keep things, you know, different specials and everything. So. And also, you know, the weather's been great outside. Irishman has the awesome patio. The patio has been, uh, has been at capacity for most of the last few days. So it's been, uh, we didn't really get too much of a break after St. Patty's Day. It's been uh, pretty much right back into summer, into summer mode here. That's so, great for you guys, though. Yeah, I can't complain. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. So. And that's open when, uh, it's a restaurant's open, the patio's open. Right. They, uh, we serve food out there. You know, not everything you can get inside, you can get out on the patio. So mm -hmm. we encourage everyone to come in. It's, uh, it's beautiful. It's a great patio, and uh, everyone seems to be having a real good time so far this year, as long as this weather lasts here. Well, maybe some rain tomorrow, but, you know, it's, well, we still have all of the spring and summer Of ahead course, of, us. of course. We're still ahead of schedule here. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, restaurant week, you could head out, get this dish, and eat it on the patio. That's right. And uh, I believe it's 2012 uh, for the entree, and you'll get a uh, super salad, one of the entrees, and a dessert, and dessert portion. How so. did the beer versus wine event go? What beer won, versus beer wine? wine? Beer won out, beer as, won. as I knew it would. See, I'm a beer guy <laughs> myself. I knew it would win out in the end. But, uh, yeah, that was, it was a good time, uh, very successful, so... Good. Thank you very much. And, and uh, as luck would have it, we that would be the finished product there. But this I can great. I can also show you how to top off this with. Uh, so how it. long do you want to cook that sauce for? How do you know when it's done? When it well, thickens up? Basically, when it starts getting like that, you're good. To, I mean, I'd say another 10 seconds or so, and okay. we should be good to go. I'm gonna and have I'm a little gonna, bite of this. I put a little mozzarella. Can... Yeah, you're good to go. Do you need a knife? Eh, there you go. A fork. Oh, falling right apart for you there. Yes, it looks so yummy. Mmm, really good. And then we'll give it a little additional sauce on top. So then you bake the pork and then you put the barbecue sauce on and the put it in for a little sauce, bit longer to warm it up? The cook it a little up. bit longer to warm it up, yep, and then we'll top it with the, uh, with the mozzarella. Start to finish, I think I've already asked you, but how long do you think this dish will make? I'd take? say between a half hour, half hour, 35 minutes. Maybe the rice slows it down a little bit, the rice peel off, you want to wait till that cooks, and then, like I said, basically just getting, the, it's a matter of getting the batter on there and then just finish cooking the pork. And the some of the parsnip. Um, and, of course, restaurant week coming up next week. This is going to be one of the dishes. You have some tilapia on there. We have tilapia. Uh, yes, we have a buffalo chicken pasta on there. So we have a lot of... A lot of uh, options. A lot of and, options. And for we, $20, you get a coursed meal. Right. So really, it's a pretty good deal. And during lunch, I believe it's uh, two, two entrees for 2012. So it's always busy. It's always popular. Uh, we encourage everyone to come out for it next week. And have it on the patio if right. the weather permits. Well, right. Get in line, though, because you got to get there early. you got to get in early. No, no reservations for the patio. Let's throw oh, okay. that out there, That's too. That's good to know. Yes. All right. Okay, so coming up, we're going to get back in the kitchen with our second helping, but now we're going to send things over to Laura. Hey, Laura. Welcome back. We're back in the kitchen with Chef Tom. This is great, the Santa Fe pork. It's going to be on the Restaurant Week menu. Thanks. So I highly recommend you go to the Irishman, get it. If you can't make it next week, the patio's open all spring, summer, even into the fall. It will be. It'll be rocking all <laughs> summer long. We're, uh, we're looking forward to it. Okay, what are we going to make for our second helping? Well, this is just a, uh, an appetizer we run sometimes, just a different quesadillas that we tend to run. And uh, for this one, we have a little bit of the pork that okay. I've just sauteed off. It didn't beer batter this or anything. Just a mix of a mozzarella and cheddar cheese and, of course, our uh, salsa, which I think I may, I may have to make on the show at some point. It's more of a pico de gallo, but basically we have uh, lemon zest, orange zest, lime zest, cilantro, uh, peppers, uh, red onion, tomatoes. It looks really fresh. It is. Is there any pineapple in there? No, no pineapple in there. No, it's pretty much just tomatoes, peppers, and onions, but okay. the cilantro and the uh, citrus kind of gives it a nice flavor. So. Now, when I make quesadillas, I usually use cheddar cheese, and I feel like that gets kind of... Um, Almost runny, I don't know. So does mixing it with the mozz help? 
The mouths might. I mean, it's they're pretty close to the same consistency. It might bind a little bit, but uh, if you're having a problem with the cheese running out, you need to put a little more. I think you need to put a little more actual, uh, actual more, more meat substance. and potatoes, That's so right. to speak, in there. Of course, I would always say that. That's just kind of my <laughs> style when it comes to this stuff. And we just spread our salsa in there and, uh, of course, our pork. And, of course, you can substitute chicken. Uh, we do a buffalo chicken quesadilla. We do a Philly cheesesteak quesadilla. We try to change things up just because, you know, we got the, the Irish title does not mean that we uh, try to limit oh, ourselves. Uh, yeah, we try to do a lot of different specials. And then basically an oven, 350 for, uh, I would say about 20, maybe about 10, 15 minutes, depending until it starts to get to a nice golden brown. And voila, and this is it. As luck would have it, we have that. Okay, I'm going to try this after the show because we actually have to send things over for our violinist, Chef Tom. Thank you so much.